Animal Crossing New Horizons released on the 20th of March in the year 2020, a significant year for many reasons, most notably the pandemic. Four days before Animal Crossing New Horizons released, the UK Prime Minister declared that non-essential contact and travel must stop. Two days before the game released, schools across the UK closed indefinitely. A day before the game released, the Prime Minister stated that UK citizens could turn the tide of the pandemic within 12 weeks. In due course, this would prove to not be the case. Three days after Animal Crossing New Horizons was released, the Prime Minister announced the rules of the first pandemic-related lockdown. Rules that would come into force on the 26th of March. People were told to stay at home and to work from home if possible. Shops, gyms, social venues, restaurants, these all had to close. Leaving your home became permissible only under certain conditions, such as to shop for essential goods like food or to exercise, perhaps by going for a walk. The world began to shrink as my view, more often than not, stretched only as far as the walls in my apartment permitted. My housemate is a teacher and would often be busy teaching online. I was trying to finish writing up my PhD and was stressed. Being a PhD student is a notoriously challenging and isolating experience, even when not enduring a pandemic. Keeping track of time began to feel meaningless as the novelty of staying at home all day wore off. Days bled into each other. Weeks felt like a lifetime and a moment at once. The flow of time was disrupted and eventually replaced by a perpetual present. I was so... bored. I don't remember the exact date that my copy of Animal Crossing New Horizons arrived, but I do remember feeling apprehensive about buying it. My first Animal Crossing game was Wild World for the Nintendo DS, and I dedicated a massive amount of time to playing it. I didn't enjoy the game's sequels as much. City Folk and New Leaf are both good games, However, neither could beat my first experience with the franchise. With this in mind, I began playing New Horizons tentatively, unsure of what to expect. Right away, New Horizons felt different. In the real world, my movement was restricted. For my safety and the safety of others, travelling was not an option. Yet here I was, standing in an airport, albeit virtually, being greeted by two raccoons at the check-in counter for my deserted island getaway package. I hadn't left my apartment, but I was going somewhere. And to add to that, I was going somewhere new during a period of my life that was otherwise laden with mundanity. When Tom Nook asked me what I wanted to call my island home, I proposed the name Arcadia due to its natural beauty. The island was wonderful separated from the world's problems in a figurative and literal sense. In New Horizons, the island is detached from civilization. It is an unexplored peninsula that me and my island companions decide to build our homes on. As a video game, it represented a much needed form of escapism. Time in video games does not always align with time in real life. Therefore, we can distinguish between playtime which describes the time it takes for players to play a game, and fictional time, which describes the time it takes for events to happen in the game's world. When playtime and fictional time aren't aligned, time in games moves slower or faster than time in real life. Think of games like The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, where you can slow down or speed up the progression of in-game time. In Animal Crossing games, playtime and fictional time occur on a one-to-one -one basis, meaning that one hour of playtime equates to one hour passed in the world of the game. Because of this, the in-game store, Nook's Cranny, which is open from 8am to 10pm in New Horizons, is only accessible during this time slot in real life, if the player does not change the time on their Nintendo Switch console, of course. Consequently, when playing the game properly, that is, without time travelling, New Horizons is directly connected to the player's experience of time in the real world. When the UK was placed under lockdown, my sense of time began to slip away. New Horizons countered this issue because it continuously foregrounds the passage of time. Daytime is typically light, providing it isn't raining, and nighttime is dark. 
Blathers sleeps during the day and wakes up during the evening, as you would expect an owl to do. Isabel mentions the precise time and date during her daily announcements before briefing you on seasonal topics and island visitors. Clocks appear inside Nook's Cranny, and both inside the resident services building and outside of it too. More clocks can be purchased with in-game currency and displayed wherever players decide to place them. Some furniture items are even affected by the passage of time, like fountains that shoot water higher alongside the chiming of the resident services building clock. Adding to these examples, every time the player pauses for a moment, the game displays the current time and date. It is impossible to not keep track of time while playing New Horizons. With a clearer perception of time, I was able to create a daily routine around Animal Crossing. Play the game in the morning, do some work in the afternoon, and play the game some more in the evening. Inside the game, I would wake up, dig up the fossils, harvest the fruit, go fishing or catch some bugs, ask Blathers to inspect my findings, donate things to the museum, sell what can't be donated, check the store for desirable furniture, socialise with the neighbours. There was so much to do, and even more now since the Happy Home Paradise expansion released. Crucially, alongside a routine, New Horizons gave me things to look forward to. I didn't know when the real world would open again. I didn't know when I would be able to sit inside a restaurant again or walk around shops, other than those selling essential products like food. However, I did know that new animals would be moving to my island in the days to come. I knew when shops on my virtual peninsula would be built and when they would open for business. I knew when Blathers would open his museum. I knew when additions to my island home would be built after I paid off my loans to Tom Nook. In an uncertain world, Animal Crossing New Horizons gave me certainty. The game also functioned as a facilitator for social interaction. During lockdown you couldn't visit people in person, but you could visit them virtually. A community dedicated to New Horizons emerged online, and through engaging with members of this community, I was able to visit islands other than my own. The islands I was able to explore were amazing. Cityscapes, magical forests, gothic towns, hot deserts, the cold surface of the moon. Travel across and beyond the world was possible without leaving my room. Visiting these places was exciting. The composition of buildings, items, pathways and plants was always a joy to behold. The pandemic clearly couldn't stifle human creativity. At the time of recording this video, I have played Animal Crossing New Horizons for over 450 hours. My friends have also dedicated hundreds of hours to playing the game, it's very easy to do. I play the game less these days, the UK has near enough returns to pre-pandemic normality and other games have caught my attention. This isn't to say that I'm completely done with New Horizons, but my interest in the game is waning. Looking back on my time with New Horizons, I am very grateful for the experiences it gave me. Looking forward and anticipating the future of video games, I'm excited to discover what's to come.